I'm Raven. And I'm Faranir. And this is the podcast where we try to answer the question, can two creatives really break free from the nine to five grind and find success in a more fulfilling creative life? Mm. If you haven't been here before, we're going to do a little bit of a catch up reintroduction. It's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. while. This Maybe is episode 13. You've just forgotten. That's I it. forget sometimes. So do I. It's <laughs> been a journey. Who am I really? <laughs> Deep inside. So we are two people who work full-time jobs mm. that we don't entirely love. We're not passionate about. Mm. You know, they pay the bills, they get us by, but they're not what we want to do. When we, you ask the question, can you, where can you see yourself in five years' time? Mm. My answer is, not at that job. I don't, I, if I'm still there <laughs> the in five thing. years' time, something has gone yeah. wrong. You know? Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, the industry I work in is fine. You work in retail. Mm. We've talked about that a lot before. I don't think it would matter where you work in retail, unless it was maybe like, like not commercial retail, like you worked in a music shop yeah. selling guitars. Yeah, I worked in like a guitar sales shop, Sales right. is not bad. It's mm. like commercial big retail like you know the big brands um i think wherever you go they kind of all seem to be the same Mm. really the same problems definitely the same things that you want to avoid seem to happen at all of them um but at least i'm in an industry i enjoy it's just the actual workplace that i enjoy less Mm. um which is very sort of like draining on your, your time and it kind of leaks into when you finish work you just feel like exhausted after it um, so yours is definitely worse than mine, mm-hmm. um, but them combined, it's not a good yeah. mix. <laughs> we have hopes and dreams. We're full of hopes and dreams here. Yeah. So if you are also the kind of person who has loads of creative aspirations, things you want to do, things you mm. want to achieve, things you want to actually you know, be passionate about, and you want to leave the grind behind, you're probably in the right place, because that's what we're aiming for. And we started this off as a way to kind of capture our journey. Mm. And the whole point is that we're not telling you how to make an instant overnight success because we don't know the answers. We haven't done it yet. That's why we're here. That's (laughs) why we're here. We're trying to figure it out. And this is our way of figuring it out. So we capture all of our progress, all the things that have worked, all the things that haven't worked, all the mistakes we make and the the mistakes we don't make um so you can kind of learn from them and not make the same mistakes we did and hopefully by the end there'll be like a nice collection of tips and tricks and little hacks that will hopefully get you to the same place we're hoping to go it's that's, like that's a the lot, goal anyway a lot of the existing sort of podcasters and sort of influencers as well they speak from a place where they've already been very successful and a lot of them i have to say already kind of have an in in whatever they want to do which makes it a little bit easier um as we haven't really got much of that and we are going from scratch really we want to work full time in things that we love in creative things that we love which are quite different as well we'll talk about that Mm -hmm. in a little bit as well um But yeah, it's just, it's to sort of have a document of two people who hopefully make it into that um, from scratch, but also the reality of what it's like to work as a creative as well. And Mm. that it isn't, you know, sunshines and rainbows. It can be (laughs) quite hard. And I'm sure any person in any kind of creative sector has had family and friends be like, well, that's not really a job. When, you know, it is. It's just, it's a different way of working, isn't Mm. it? Yep. That's it. There can be a lot of negativity about that. It's like, what do you want to do that for? That's not yeah. a real job. It's like, but it's something I would enjoy and can make yeah. money from because lots I, of people I actually, do. So. Um, <laughs> I actually listened to a podcast yesterday and I sent it to Rowan, who also is a, a crafting friend of ours. And it was about the difference between art and crafts and how certain arts are seen as valuable, like painting, uh, and then crafts, like sewing, embroidery, textiles, um, are seen as really devalued photography Mm. as well and that a lot of people if it's not very clearly academic they don't see the value in it but actually every single thing in every single person's life has a creative input on it Mm -hmm. whether it's the jingle on the ads that you watch you know the way that your pc looks and the color of it and you know just everything the way that your door opens and closes is designed by someone and i think it's very easy to push that kind of, I don't know, 
the skill of it mm. aside and not realise how valuable creative skills are across every single aspect of life, really. There's always a big focus on just the academic side of things and not, not both. Yeah, mm. exactly that. So we're going to talk a bit about that today. Yeah. So if you could teleport into five years' time, mm-hmm. what would be your, your goal uh, income? why it's not just like hobbies and interests, but like what would you want to be doing as your main source or sources mm-hmm. of income um i think i would like to have photography as like my main foundation because mm. I, I have lots of skills now and i think that's the most monetizable um especially in our current sort of situation in a way because mm. um, a lot of the others you need a far bigger space for and yeah. all this stuff uh, so i'll get to that in a moment but i think photography is probably the most um, easy to get to yeah. at this point in time, and I can picture that happening easily in five years. You've time already as well. got a lot of the pieces in place for yes, it. Yes, definitely. Uh, I've been building up over that over the last couple of years, mm. so I have a Doing lovely good. collection of lenses now. I have a wonderful, incredible camera, which I love. I, the pieces. I dread to think how much we've both spent. Oof. Like if we were to sp- on all the photography equipment, like all the light boxes and everything. Yeah. If we put it all in one place, like, we bought it all in one go, I dread to think. Because it doesn't feel like it's been bad because we've bought it no, in three years. If, yeah. But... If you did it all in a day, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, um, it's going to get expensive be a to ensure. That's, full that's, Amazon uh, truck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that would be the foundation. Yeah. I, I'm hoping to be totally self-employed, no no bosses moaning at me, no <laughs> silly me. corporate responsibility. Yeah, just you. I'm okay <laughs> with that. I'm used to you moaning at me. That's different. <laughs> I'll get you after this. Yeah, I know it. (laughs) Um, So that's the goal. I'm sick of, you know, like on principle alone, I'm sick of working so hard 40 hours a week just to make some CEO's bonus even bigger while I just constantly get shat on, you know. I I can't do that forever. I don't know how people manage to do it forever. But I I can't tolerate that. I can't think of still doing that in 20 years' time. Like some people I know feel like doing that. It's It's the fact it's not two ways, you know. Yes, you work incredibly hard to basically, you know, let a CEO live a lavish life mm. somewhere, but there's no respect and care towards you and you know, other co-workers. You're no. expendable. They would replace you within a day. Mm. They'd put the, the job post out within the day. Yeah. You know, there's no, like, oh, you know, they, they work so hard and, like, here's, you know, bonuses and, like, treats and, like, good working mm. standards and, you know, all this sort of thing. It's just, like, no. No, that's it. Last year, our, our company celebrated record successes and weeks later they told us about our management bonus for the year and it was a third less than the year before yeah hard to justify it's, that exa- it's exactly that because yep. if you if it worked both ways it still wouldn't be ideal but it would at least be like well actually you mm. know they do treat us really well we get nice bonuses and good pay and good working standards and in fact it's very 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 one way extremely which is just very it's it's Humanizing, it's, yeah. it's, you know. So I, I don't fancy doing that long no. term. No. So no bosses, no corporate obligations. Just setting my own time frames, picking the projects I want to work on. So um, I'm thinking lots of <coughs> wedding photography, lots of nice like cosplay and modeling shoots that we've been doing. Mm-hmm. We can expand on all that. There's so many different elements that we can bring together. Um, And then we've got things like our streaming and our video editing. That's another key pillar of things that's coming on nicely. And then my music things as well. So I'm really heavy into mixing music. I love that, mixing and mastering music. I love it, I love it. I've been studying it for years. First started back in college years and years ago. I had the worst lecturer in the world. We eventually <laughs> had to get him fired because he was so useless. So I've actually learned far more in my own like private study time than mm. I ever did in college. Um, and that's getting better and better. So I'd like to tie that in as well. But again, like I said earlier, you just need more space for that. Like You need like, yeah. a professional retreated yeah. room. And you need someone that looks great on Instagram, you know. And a Herman Miller chair. And a Herman Miller <laughs> Aaron chair, of course. That's the real goal. We'll get them anyway. Uh, at, least, at least you'll get one. I quite like my, my current pink one. But that's it. I know as soon as we get our own place, that's the first. <laughs> we'll have no t- other furniture, but we'll have a Herman Miller chest. That's it's the fine. main thing. Our backs will be very grateful. <laughs> um, so things like that. Like I've got so many elements we can tie in, yeah. and I'd love to do that. So that's that's what I'm thinking. Tie yeah. all those together, and we've got nice few steady streams of income. Mm. 
Happy and it's days. nice you've got things because photography is often quite seasonal based. I mean, especially for wedding photography, you from sort of, I don't know, March to September would be flat out. But those little months in the winter, mm. some people still have like October yeah. weddings, like little spooky ones. Like but we've got later this year. Yeah, but it's it's less it's less common for sure. Definitely. Um, so it's nice to have other things as a bit of a, mm. a backup bit of income as yeah, well. For mm. sure. How about you? Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Um, I still really love graphic design. I still really like graphic design. Good. Um, and I would like to also do that self-employed or at least freelance. Mm. Um, I found a company nearby to me who they have their own in-house designers and then they also freelance designers out as well for like specific projects. Nice. So, you know, having something like that might work well. Um, and doing a lot of sort of, um, elements and brand kits for people as well. I've really enjoyed everything that we've made for us I always like making very personalised mm. uh, and sort of like unique things in that way so I definitely still want to be working in design um, I have a love-hate relationship with marketing I do like it to an extent but there's so much of it that it's I, I don't know if I could I don't know if I could sell it you know, mm. I think I, some aspects of it I could do, but I currently do the marketing for us and the two jobs that I do, yeah. and it's it's a lot. I don't think I could do the marketing as like a business. I couldn't market for other people all the time because yeah. it is so draining. It's a lot. Um, so yeah, I think mostly graphic design and more artistry stuff. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy painting. I've always really enjoyed painting, and over the past few years, I've not had much practice at it because of doing more corporate and academic things, mm. I've I've not been able to have the time to sit down and practice it. So like, yeah. as a kid, I did it all the time, literally every single day. All I would do would be painting. My mum was going through uh, mine and my siblings' stuff in the attic the other month, and my siblings got big boxes like full of toys and teddies and cars and that sort of thing. And I had a small box of teddies, mm. but then I just had books and folders and, you know, stuck together bits of like vinyl stuff oh. of art that I made like just like so like books and books and books of art and drawing and mm. paintings and things I've made and sculptures I didn't I like toys but they weren't you know I much rather sit down with a pencil and paper yeah. and draw um and I that hasn't gone away I've just not been able to do more of it yeah that's fair. so it'd be nice to build that sort of more into my lifestyle I don't know how I quite monetize it um i really liked doing the pet portraits um mm. and i think that the reason i stopped doing it was because it was a lot on top of doing um college and then apprenticeships yeah. and then that with a job and everything but i did enjoy it um so that sort of thing i think i could do again mm. um but it's something more arty and I, I really like cosplay stuff but it's hard to monetize cosplay and things like yeah. that um but just something that allows me to be more creative i won't i don't mind if i'm still doing um a sort of employed job somewhere mm. but it's got to be with better working standards than the one that i'm currently doing Definitely. and less hours because i currently do um full-time and then a part-time job and then what me and you do as well <laughs> so it's a lot and then i still do some freelance stuff here and there i still do some pet portraits and bits of design and marketing for people so i think i could do more of those things if I just didn't have a nine to five that drained me quite yeah. as much. Not only the time it takes up, but also just the mental drain exactly as that. well. So yeah, That's I don't I don't mind if I'm it. still working, you know, like for someone. Um, but they've got to be a good person. They've yeah. got to be a nice person. Fingers crossed. Yeah. If I was still doing my part time job, that'd be fine. Mm. It's just my my day job. I can't. <laughs> I can't Time to move on. It's just us thing. It's just too much, and it just. Like, I want to do stuff all day. I'd be like, I don't want to be working. I'd rather be painting. And then I get to the end of the day and I'm like, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> I just want to go to bed. <laughs> so, yeah, I just more time and energy to do art things and then hopefully do freelance design mm. on the side. I do really love it. It's, it's really enjoyable. Good. That kind of segues us into our next point then. So um, it's been raised by a friends of ours that when you're kind of growing up, you're kind of taught that creative things only have limited purpose, you know, kind of like we touched on earlier. Mm. So if you learn to paint, you're just going to be a professional artist, a professional painter. You're just going to put your paint on a canvas 
and you're going to sell it, and that's, that's it. That's as far as you're going to go. Or you're going to become a musician, and you're going to join a band, and that's that, you know? But things have changed a lot in, like, the last 10 years, I would say, a dramatically. Lot. A lot. Really and, opened up. And things have really opened up, and there's so many more avenues now than there used to be for really taking your skills and doing practical things with them. Mm. So you've got things like, like, where did I start? I started just wanting to do music, and I was starting to make guitar videos for YouTube and things like that. I and miss you doing them. I miss me doing them. It's I been really, a while. If I could have one request. <laughs> yeah. I want more, more, more music videos. I'm so You're out so of good practice at them. now. No. Uh, pff, oh, You're I not, am. actually. Oh, no, I am. You pick it up. I mean, that's the thing. I do pick it up again yes, quick when I get going. Fine. Just need a couple of days, like, you know, 12-hour runs until my fingers bleed and I'll be straight back where I was. Um, I'm hoping to do that once we move, honestly. Once we have a nice big open space again, I have everything set up. I can replace my poor broken amp cable. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, Neighbours won't like it. They'll be in terrace housing oh, then. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to terrify them. <laughs> What's this devil music coming from next door? <laughs> Um, so, yeah, yeah, anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> slight detour. Um, so, yeah, I started, I just wanted to do that. And from there, I had to learn how to edit videos and I had to learn how to make art assets for thumbnails and things like that. And it just ended up being a constant rabbit hole. I'd learned so much. Mm -hmm. And then we started doing what we're doing when we got together. And I had to really, you know, hone in on those things even more. And then... We started streaming as well. That was another complete rabbit hole of things to learn. And all of these little skills started coming together because all of my music stuff totally ties into the video editing and the streaming and stuff. Mm. You've got to edit and EQ and compress all your audio and use all these effects and things. And I love that. It all just ties in beautifully. And then I started getting into photography as well. And that's another complete range of skills and stuff that started combining mm. and you can do so many different things with these now and it's not like it used to be where you just have to you know be an artist you can do so many practical things with this and um there we go tell us some more about this of being an artist yeah How, okay as i was saying a minute ago um i've always done art i've always done drawing making creating um and i i did a lot of painting and drawing but I also did a lot of like 3D sculpting and things like that. And the only reason I really stopped was because it always took up a lot of space. And you know, mum was always like, you got stuff everywhere, stop making things, where are we gonna put it? You know, so at least with like flat paintings, you could like stack them a lot. And that's when I began to see more digital art. And I was very much in the deviant art age. I'm sure some people will know that. Mm -hmm. People were beginning to do digital drawings and put them everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be one of these people who are making digital art because there was no restraint on how much I could make. Yes, I, like my PC could only hold a certain amount, but if I could upload it onto someone like deviant art, it was endless mm -hmm. and I could like collab with other friends and so that's how I really started to get into digital art and I got my first graphics tablet um for my I think it's my 12th birthday I think it was maybe 13th um I got a Wacom tablet I was very very fortunate to get one of them um they're not actually too expensive but even so like it's not the sort of thing you buy for your kid mm -hmm. but um thankfully a family member also had one and so it was like oh no they're really good you should get her one um so that's how I started doing digital art and then I did uh graphic design at college because I began to learn more about design and digital art kind of working together and we had to pick a specialist subject and I went to a lot of conventions when I was a kid and I always loved the packaging on Japanese candy and I would like save it or I had folders of um, design inspiration and I had one which was like all Japanese packaging because I just loved like the colours and the vibrancy and it was a nice way to mix sort of illustrations and design together. Um, so I did some research on marketing between um, Western and Eastern standards, how they differ, how they work, you know, is the sort of how marketing works, is it different in different countries? And the more I looked into it, the more I was like, oh, I might actually really 
enjoy marketing. This is really interesting because I was looking at marketing more from like the design side of marketing on why things work, why certain colours, you know, invoke certain feelings and emotions and thoughts. And I was really kind of going into the sciencey side of it as well. Um, and that's how I then went to do a marketing apprenticeship. I did two of them. I did a level three diploma and then a level four diploma. So I was able to learn the sort of nitty gritty marketing side of things while still being able to drag through from the beginning the artistry and design skills and kind of combine it all into one. So that's the more like kind of formal education side of Mm. the skills that I developed. But that's really dominated into everything I do now as a hobby, you know, whether it's making videos on how I build cosplays, whether it's social media marketing, which is another area that I never even thought of is that I spend loads of time on social media, but I never really thought about making ads for social media, making content and videos, you know, all the things that we do for streaming or the assets. Um, I, back in like the DeviantArt um, days, I got asked to make thumbnails and banners for YouTube. It was when YouTube was just beginning to kind of take off, I think in like 2011 was when Mm. we were beginning to really build sort of like the gaming momentum. Mm. And I had started building assets for people then. And so it just all really dominated together. But if you'd asked sort of when I was a teenager and you're kind of looking at what you're going to do as an adult, I never would have said marketing and building assets and uh, like brand design I probably would have said graphic design but I wasn't aware of how many things it dominoes into Mm, and the more that time goes on the more I learn of things that I can do things I can build you know I'm looking um at the moment I'm doing YouTube intros for stuff that we're doing so it just kind of like the skills keep on building and then for your own like your photography stuff as well I'm able Mm -hmm. to help you with like your social media and like marketing side of things so it's yeah I I wouldn't have initially thought of doing that but actually there's lots of different bits of industry and sectors that the skills that I have and enjoy actually kind of work in Mm. and they're quite um they're quite versatile on where I can use them as well because you know I currently use them for what we do um but the same marketing knowledge and design knowledge can be used for any kind of business you know I could help do the marketing for a dentistry or you know it could be anything so I think it's it's um it's good to look at where else your skills could be used Mm. because they do help with you still being able to do something you enjoy but also still have an income from it as well definitely just think outside the box a little mm. that's it yeah i mean I'm, I'm quite fortunate that mine kind of dominoed as nicely as it, it did um but i did i did go out and look for those things you know the, i didn't i could i didn't have to pick marketing as my graphic design like mm. special topic but i mixed you know me liking conventions and anime and like Japanese candy in the packaging I just dragged that into what I wanted to do and and made it work that's it Mm. absolutely sounds good so that's it just focus on what you want to do always have that as the core yeah for sure definitely and see where you can take it that can be you know beneficial and hopefully profitable Mm. there is always more things you can do even if you don't realise it yeah so moving on then what have we been up to over the last couple of weeks since our last episode? We've had a quite busy time. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, sometimes I feel like the the two weeks between them goes really slowly, and other times I'm like, how are we already doing another mm. another podcast? It's gone by really fast. Definitely. Um, should I go first? On what you we've been go doing? first. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, Twitch emote resizing tools. Uh, I found this cheeky little thing. To be honest. I could have found it sooner. I just didn't think to Google it. And I'm sure <laughs> someone out there has been like, why didn't you just use them? Uh, so I'm going to tell you now. I made some emotes for a friend and it's a real pain in the ass to resize each and every one individually, especially when we did like a set of them at a time. Mm. Thankfully, good old internet has a tool that just does it for you. Uh, I used a site called gamingvisuals.com and all you do is you upload the image that you want in whatever quality you want ideally the better the easier it is Mm. and then you can select whether you want it as an emo or a badge or you know whatever it is and then you can pick which sizes you want so all you do is you press one button and it will just download each of the three sizes beautiful just Just upload one image 
and then press. I want that one, that one, and that one. It's way more hassle before, wasn't and it? And it was so quick. Mm. I did. I did four emotes in oh, two minutes. Bless. The time it took for me to upload and download them was longer than just <laughs> picking the ones I wanted. It was amazing. I loved it. Um, so now, for all the ones that we do from here on out, mm. I'm gonna do that. And it even it saves them with the number in the name of the image as well, so you know which ones were as well. Perfect. So it does it all for you. It's amazing. There you go. I just didn't even bother to Google it, honestly. I could have. I just didn't even search for it. There you go. Top tip for the day. That'll save you some time. Yeah. And you're making your all I was doing was searching what were the sizes again. And this little <laughs> site was like, I ended that for you. And I was like, <laughs> I got you. Here you go. Have that. And it was free to use. There was no limit on it. It didn't say you can only use it three times and you got yeah. paid. It was just give us all the emotes. No nonsense. So, Half highly days. recommend that. Um, we also... I say we, I, technically. Oh, this is all you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am starting Masterpiece Mondays. Whether they're going to be masterpieces or not, <laughs> I don't quite know. But that's what we're going to go for. Old claim. Um, I did a art stream for National Art Day. I think that was the day after our last podcast. It, it would have yeah, been, yes. Yeah. I think I said that I was going to be doing that. Um, and it was one of our... I think that was our best stream, yeah. It was the best. Yeah. It was our best stream, yeah. And I hadn't done any art. So that was uh, mid-April. I'd not done any art streams since, I think, like, January 1st. Something like that. It's quite a while um, ago. Yeah, so it'd been, like, four months. I was like, you know, I think that's going to be great. Um, I just really, yeah, I, I was excited to do it, but I, I didn't have, like, super high hopes. And the streams, we'd done two streams before then, mm-hmm. and they'd done okay, but not, not great, not back to what we were. No. Um, and it was our best yet. And I was like, wow, this is really nice. We had, like, average 12 viewers, which yeah. for us, we normally have average, like, four to five, I yeah. think. Best, Depends what we're doing, we've really. ever done by far. Um, and I think it, it had loads of, like, unique viewers, loads of new people coming in, loads of followers from it. Yep. Um, it was great. It was really good. And so now um, I've chosen that I will consistently do Masterpiece Mondays, which are a good time for me to do it because often Farrah works late mm-hmm. and it's just me here on a Monday, so it's quite a good time for me to do works that well, art stuff. It? Yeah. Um, so I did, I've done one so far since then, and it was also still really good. Yep. Uh, and I got one tomorrow. So I'm very excited. I painted, um, a pink cat in some, like, sunset clouds. It's very cute. I'll put a picture of it on Instagram. It's very nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, really keen for that. And the two streams that came after that were also our best yet, like, kind of total as well. Yep. Um, so it looks like we've got a bit of our momentum back which is Definitely. very nice we played uh minecraft and helldivers i think it was <laughs> and it did really well um so yeah that was that was really nice it's, it's nice to be sort of back in it Definitely. um i will say the only thing that we did change is that especially for the art streams i posted a day beforehand mm. letting people know so i did it today actually for tomorrow yeah. letting people know that tomorrow is masterpiece monday i i don't know how much it helped but they did consistently Felt better when, like we, when we said that we were going to be streaming the day before. Yeah. So the thing is, is it's harder to do that because we don't always know when we're going to have the chance to stream. Mm-hmm. At least with the, the Mondays, I know it's definitely that. That's but it. the kind of gaming ones that we do are much harder to tie down. Because of my stupid schedule changing every week. Every single uh. week. And then the sort of last thing I've done is that I did a elf ear customization video because I do get asked quite a few questions on my elf ears, how they fit, how I accessorize them, color them, all that sort of thing. Um, so I made a cute little video on how I make them, pierce them, decorate them, all that sort of thing. And it performed really, really well on TikTok. It did double our average views and 10 times more likes than we normally get. Mm. And the best part, I think, is that we had a lot of followers from it. Yeah. Because I always feel like if a lot of people like something, that's nice. But they're sort of like, I can, I think of when I'm liking things, and like, like, scroll, like, scroll. Mm. Like, you're not necessarily remembering each and everything no. as if someone if you follow someone it's like i've liked this so much i want to see more of it more of them more of this whatever it may be mm-hmm. so i think like having followers like that is a really really good metric definitely for people that's, that's enjoying the most stuff game, yeah I, really? I really i really think so because it's like they want to see more yep. it's not just like a lot and same as saves as well they want to come back and see it again yeah. um so yeah really happy with that i've got another uh Elfia one that's going to go out on Tuesday, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, yeah. I've got I've got three in total um, to go out. I'll kind of go out one after the other, and then um, I'll also be doing my little paint one as well. I'll, I'll turn that into a little 
a little uh, real, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. What about you? What have you been doing? What have I been doing? I've been crying because I made a little clip from one of our Super Mario videos (laughs) and it was the one I had to put the most work into because it included this silly little death counter because we died so many times. So this episode and the clip that I took from it took far more time to make than any normal episode or clip. Yeah. And I finally launched it thinking, yeah, this is a really funny one. This is going to do great. And then after 36 hours, it had 38 views. It was our biggest failure for a long time. And I was really <laughs> disheartened because this was the one I put so you much put more time into. You did. And, and it was good. And it was, it was good. good. And for months, I thought, this one's going to be a good, a good one. good one. You know, I've been waiting for that episode to come up. It's definitely we got... had such a laugh when we made it. And I thought it had potential, you Yeah, know? I was going to say, it definitely had comedic value, for sure. Yeah. Because there were deaths in it. It was just... So many deaths. Um, and so, yeah, it came out and it failed spectacularly. And I was, I was really annoyed because I put so much work into that one. And I looked at it again and I was like, you know what? I'm not happy with that. I, I do not accept that defeat. I do not. So I went back to Premiere Pro and I chopped the first six seconds off the video. So all I did, just chopped six seconds off. No other off, changes. Just that little tiny bit that set the scene. So that was gone. So the new cut jumped straight into it with like the first death. And I reposted that one. I deleted the original, reposted the fresh one. Same That's, text? Same text. All that. Everything was the same except missing the first six seconds. And then it became our best performing video <laughs> ever. Within an hour, I think it already outpaced every other video. It did. And when uh, the dust settled and it had enough time to do its thing, it was by far our best performing vi- clip we've ever had. Um, obviously not including the paid advertised one we did last time. Still isn't terribly um, far off of that. They really did it. Think. It, it hit 1,500 views in yeah. the end. What it did on its own. No, normally we hit like 400, like yeah. 700 is a good one, you know. This one smashed through and hit 1,500. And I was like, yes, that's what I wanted it to do. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it had the potential. Um, and I was so much happier. So that, that goes back to a lesson that we kind of touched on a while back mm. in, you know, getting the right pacing for your videos and making sure they have an impact from the start. Because people scroll through so fast, you've got like three seconds to grab their attention. And turns out my six second little scene setter on that video was just too much. People weren't going to make it that far. Because when I went through and looked at the um, stats for the original video, it said something like 80% people swiped past. Mm. Um, And that's why the views were so low, because people weren't even getting that far for it to register. No. So I was like, "That's, that's way worse than we ever have normally. Um, so I was like, yep, yeah, that's that's my sign. That's my clue that something's not right with how I've uh, cut this one. So I just chopped it up a little, and there we go. We went from a worst performing video ever to by far the best. Um, so that's a, a top tip that we're going to come back to many, many more times, I'm sure, because it, it, I prefer the original, you know? I like the little scene setter that lets you know what's coming that's, up. That's the thing. But people these days have no attention span, so... Sometimes you've got to go against what you like most and just go, yeah, people ain't going to sit around waiting five whole seconds for to find out what they're, you know, being shown. No, no. You've got to go I, straight Yeah, I, I do that in my own videos as well. Like some, like the Elfie one that I did, I um, I cut that down a lot. The first cut was about two minutes and the end cut was about one minute, 11 seconds. Mm. I had to cut that down a little bit for YouTube, actually. Yeah. It's another thing to do. Um and I just kept cutting it and cutting it and cutting it and watching it through. And I'd leave it a few days and then come back to it. And when I'd watch it through, I'd suddenly feel like, oh, I linger a bit on this, this mm. like particular scene or angle. And I just cut cut it in half. Yeah. That's why I, did. I didn't I didn't cut it by a specific amount. I just cut it in half and I'd leave it like a day or two yeah. and then watch it through again. And then eventually it was down to that. So I probably need to go through it again for YouTube and get it a little bit shorter. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely worth editing and then coming back and seeing how you can change it even if you even if you upload it how it is like see how it's performing and then like how you did with the 80 percent going away yeah like that's much much higher than we get yeah, and so it's like something is wrong in those first few seconds like it really does indicate yeah. it, it's annoying with any kind of marketing is that nothing tells you um explicitly why something's doing wrong and uh, not doing well mm. like what's wrong with it 
it's very much you've got to calculate and like go on a little like mystery solving like what's wrong what's different about it you know and and really um try and figure puzzle it out. isn't it yeah you've got to really try and figure it out um, but you did very well on that. I was really impressed mm. when you came back and told me. You were so happy. I think you were at work, <laughs> weren't you? And yeah. you were like, look what I'm doing. It's so good. It I was really so happy good. because it was a really good one. And it's sad when you put all that time and effort into making something mm. and then it just flops. And it's yeah. like, oh, you know. So, like, I know the numbers on social media don't matter. But when you put all those hours into something, yeah. it's sad when it doesn't do well. That you know? was it. It did take me way more than normal. Yeah. So... For it to flop like that, I was genuinely disappointed. Yeah, it's not like a quick pitch that you just throw up, no. you know, of you on your holiday. It's, you know, you've crafted something, you've yeah. created something and that you're happy with, and yeah. then it's like, well. well. Exactly. <laughs> and nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. But no, worked out well in the end. So, yeah, very Probably. happy with that. So, yeah, look at your analytics, see if when you're posting videos, see if people are swiping away really fast. If the vast majority of people are swiping away so fast that they're not even counting as views, just look at how you, you made that video. Mm. Put the time into thinking, is this taking too long to get to a point, you know? If you yeah. were watching that, would you sit and wait for the, the punchline? <laughs> would you sit and wait for something fun to happen? Or would you just scroll right past it? Because if you'd scroll right past it, chances are everyone else will. So keep an eye on your statistics. And if you have the opportunity to, by all means, cut the video down, delete it, and uh, post a fresh take and see if it makes a difference because I've resisted doing that so far with all that the ones I've done cool. you know but this time I was like nah I'm not going to stand for that yeah. it deserves better There's some. It um, did, so. just before we move on from video there are some interesting statistics coming out about the quality of videos for a while very professionally made and cut videos were doing the best very like you know like a video editor mm. was doing them. Um, but actually, it's going more and more towards a more personal and sort of like quicker designed mm. one. So obviously, there's still things that are important, like high quality. You know, we don't want to be able to not see what the video is about. Um, but it is moving more towards showing that there's someone has made this and it's not some like corporation cut and edge thing. So it does give you a little bit of leniency on the way that you design things it doesn't matter if it isn't like absolutely perfect like this could be used mm. for like a corporation ad or video release is that as long as you get the point across and it's like nice quality that and your personality in it matters yeah. more than having like perfectly designed elements and everything which i think is really nice for people especially for creators and small businesses because a lot of the time there isn't there isn't time mm. to spend doing that like the ability to do it is there yeah. but there isn't the time to spend you know hours and hours on every single tiny bit mm -hmm. you know you still yeah. want something good to go but it hasn't got to be you know That's, uh, as as professional as it used to be anyway for sure i'm in lots of reddit groups and things about video editing mm. and youtubing and stuff and so many people recently have been posting like i've just had the best video performance i've ever had and it was by far the worst video I've yeah. ever made. It was a 30 second clip I made on my phone while something fun was happening while I was outside. Yeah. And it because did 10 times better than all of my professionally shot yeah. studio videos. It's, <laughs> cause it's more like your friend showing you it. It's more yeah. personal, you feel connected. This has been like a thing in design and marketing for a long time and it's gradually breaking down. Is that the company used to be like, you'd speak as the business, you'd be like, this, you know, it was very professional, very formal, very mm. clean, even if it wasn't a formal business per se. Um, like, if you're a funeral director, it's obviously still going to be quite formal. Yeah. But it'd be like all businesses acted like they were a funeral director in yeah. tone. As now, it's very friendly, it's opening up a lot, it, more memes are being shared by businesses. Yeah. We're saying, like, we and you and, like, connecting more and us. It's beginning to break down that really sterile corporation look, but that has stayed in video and images for a while, like, quality and, like, cut-wise. So it's nice that that's beginning to fall into that as well because it is much nicer and you, you feel more relatable to it as well I think it's like, you know you, you kind of are like oh you know you can see more of the personality yeah. of the person who's made it for sure mm -hmm. yep be yourself that's bottom line isn't it I suppose <laughs> um, the only other thing we've really been up to is we went on a nice little <laughs> photography trip uh, we had a day of sunshine 
And we have had a few more of those recently. I must be yes, fair Yes, it is. Well, people it's who are watching will know that it's sunny because I've got like a nice, you know, I'm not yeah, 20 layers on a blanket. I've still got a blanket over me, but yeah. just for coziness. Isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I've got like a nice summery top on. I've not got like 20 jumpers and a cardigan yeah. over me and a dressing gown. We're finally getting there. It is so sunny. We had a nice sunny day last weekend, so we went for a nice stroll after work. And we had a lovely time. We went across the beach and we saw lots of lovely birds and lots of lovely wildlife. Then we came across a dead dolphin. Um, that was a first. So um, I've never seen a dolphin before. I've never seen a dolphin before. We were walking. I didn't want the first one I saw to be dead. Um, we were walking along the beach and I do? could see this thing in the sand. I won't go into detail because you know, it's not nice. But I could just see the like, big thing on the beach. And I was like, what is that? It was really far away. I was trying to squint. And so we got closer. I was like, fair enough. It's a dead animal. <laughs> And we were both like, I don't, I don't know. We got closer, and it was yeah, it's a dead dolphin. And you, you meant to report them as well. So we did that. We reported it and had someone come out and you know double check that they'd already tagged it and checked it and yep. why it died and everything. But yeah, really sad. But I've never, I, I've never, I've never seen that. I don't think no. I've ever found anything like that on the beach. That was the first. Yeah. Very sad to see. Um, mm. Poor thing. Poor thing. That wasn't nice, but it was memorable. We won't forget this walk, that's for sure, because then we carried on going and um, found a lovely little spot with loads of birds, and I captured my first shots of birds in flight. That was really nice. They were really good. I yeah. loved them. Came out really it's a lovely cool. spot, though. We should go there again. Mm, we'll definitely go there again. And then when we'd uh, finished up, we started turning around to head home. Then we found a dead badger. Again, you... I've never seen a badger. No. I really felt... You know, sometimes there's that whole thing like, the universe sends you science. I was like, we've just found two dead, rare-ish mm. animals. It was a bit more, because it was such, it was like the first proper sunny day we'd had. The first nice day. And the first day of being able to go and take photos in ages. Yeah. And I was just like, is the universe trying to tell us something? It's bizarre. And it stay <laughs> What's inside. Going on? Yeah. It's I mean, it was, it was still again. a lovely day out. But yeah, it was just like, what? ominous thing is this Bizarre. telling us it balanced out in the end though because just after that we saw a baby bunny and that oh, was alive it was really cute it was still alive it was so. really sweet it was a little in the sun so in this little head little face so small. can we get a bunny yes definitely um so yeah Not that's that been hard. our last two weeks um hopefully the next two weeks are going to be a little less hectic uh, we've got a few things planned nothing and major no Morbid animals. No dead animals. That's that's the goal for the next two weeks. No dead animals. None, it's not much please. to ask for, is it? No. <laughs> um, so, over the next week, I have another bit of photography practice coming up. I have my first set of, like, high-speed, fast action shots, because I'm going to go horse riding. Well, not me and myself. I will never go horse riding, because they're gigantic and terrify me sometimes. Have you not been horse riding? No. No. Don't tell my friend. Um... Gosh, you'd kill me. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go... I love up, horse riding. I'm going to go up to the stables with my friend who has a horse. And we're going to take photos of her running around, jumping things, you know, what horse <gasps> people do. Can we get a picture of me on a horse with that shield? Yes, definitely. That would be so good. That would be cool. Do they have any, like, big white horses? That would be perfect. Yeah, they probably do. Um, her one's a little so bit too I'm going to do me. that. Um, and... And then we're going to see what comes up because they might have some opportunities for a budding photographer coming up moving on the next few months. So we're going to have a nice little practice on Wednesday this week and, and see how that goes. They're not scared. What's good? Horse people like spending money on their horses. They do. And they like spending money on pictures of their they horses. They do. So it's a quite good a market good, to get into. That is quite a good, yeah. Exactly. So Again, you wouldn't have ever thought of yourself as someone who does horse photography. No. But it it could, could be do. a viable could be avenue. Yeah. That's the thing. So I'll give you answers on that in the next <laughs> couple of weeks. You'll make you come back like a, a horse photographer connoisseur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's my big goal for this week. Um, what are you doing next? I'm doing a paint review. I have bought the Himmy gouache paints mm -hmm. that I have wanted for many, many years. And they're not, they're, they're not even that expensive. The reason I hadn't bought them yet was because I wasn't painting enough to justify buying more art supplies. Um, because basically, I would say a, a good quarter of my belongings are art-based. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, I can't add to them if I'm not already using the ones that I have. Yeah. Um, but I have started to do that far more. And then they came on sale and I was like, oh, you know, so I got them. It was um, a sign. 
so yeah, I'm gonna do a review of them. I've done the first half, the opening, the unboxing of them, and I've swatched all of them. And so now I'm gonna paint something with them and then review how they perform, what I think of them, that sort of thing. I'm very excited. Sounds good. Can't wait to see very how excited. it turns out. Um, and my other lingering job that I've been waiting on for a few weeks now is to finish my Premiere Pro tutorial video that I started probably a month ago now. Oh, I God. think this is the third time we've mentioned yeah. this. So third time lucky. This has got to be the one. Next one, you'll say, I've done it. Yeah. I've had a, 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 there's something else I've done the last couple of weeks that I haven't actually mentioned, but that will be coming up very soon in my highlight of the last two weeks. And that did take a lot of my creative time like, over the last couple of weeks, to be fair. So now that that's out the way, I will have more time over the next two weeks. I don't know that I know that is. Oh, you definitely do. Um, you will have a light bulb moment as soon as I mention it in a second. Um, so yeah, that's my other job. I want that done and out the way, and I want to see how that does, because that's, again, another little flavour for our content, you know? So, yep, that's my plan for the next two weeks. Photography practice, fast action horse shots, and the Premiere Pro tutorial video, as well as normal editing for Minecraft and Mario stuff, of course. And you've got the paint review and more ear stuff. I gotta edit the. That sounds fun, doesn't it? <laughs> I gotta edit the other two elf ear videos. I gotta do the paint review. I gotta edit the paint review. Yeah. I gotta do the masterpiece Mondays. And for crying out loud, I gotta start my bloody cosplay. Oh god, yeah, you do. You're running out of time. We're now. less than a month now. It's the 28th. We're and I think Comic Con is on the 26th. We're gonna have to film like a really intense, like high pressure <laughs> vlog series now, aren't we? Yeah. With a daily count, we've got 28 days. Yeah. I haven't even started yet. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be epic. Maybe we can do that on, Shaky on social hand media. Cam yeah. <laughs> yeah. If everyone just goes and bullies me on social media, yeah. I'll do it. I've oh. got. I've literally. I've got a. I see it here. I've got yep. a box over there yeah. full of only cosplay things, and it's taking up vital space we have in this yeah. room and the only reason it's here is because i need to do it and i've it's already been down here for like a month that's the funny thing and i've not it? even started we were like we can't do it yet all the stuff's scattered i don't have it all so we brought it all down piled it in one box in one place still hasn't moved in <laughs> in my defense and this is the, the only there's two things that have actually generally stopped me from doing this mm. number one is that i have uh ears to make which are made of fur yeah. and shaving fur is a nightmare and you have to do it outside it has rained Every single day until like earlier this week. That's true. So that's that's been that's that. That's a fair point. I could have started work on that. the wig, but I couldn't have done anything else. So mm. there is that. The other thing is because I've started to do more art things, I do also have no space around me anymore, and I don't know where I'm going to make the wig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of looking at my desk now, and I'm like, I'm, I don't know what it. Yeah. I've literally I've blocked myself in. I've got paint both sides of me directly. And some cookbooks. I, I suppose I could move them. Um, so that's the other thing. We'll make it. So there, there's a few steps that have to happen before I can start. Yeah. But that's what I can organise today. Yeah. Make the space for that it. That might be wise. Cool. So, so with that <laughs> out of the way, let's start wrapping this up because this has probably been a long one by now. Um, what was the highlight of your Fortnite? My paints. Easy. 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 Hand down. They are jelly gouache paints and they literally are like jelly. It's like painting with a Photoshop brush. It's just Weird. so smooth. There's no streaks in the brush. It's just, it's amazing. I can't, I'm annoyed in a way that I didn't get them sooner because <laughs> I love them. Um, I hope it doesn't um, doesn't seep into my love of watercolours because I also have a lot of that. I don't think it will. They're quite, they're quite different. Um, but I think I'm going to have a, a gouache phase Mm -hmm. for a little bit now because I absolutely love them and I cannot wait to do more. I'm glad. Glad they were worth it. Yep. Very and nice. they're huge. They're, they're they really, are huge. They're huge. They're way too big. Way bigger than we expected. Mm. Which is a nice surprise sometimes. Um, <laughs> take that how you will. Um, cool. I'm very happy for you. What Highl was the highlight of your fortnight? Highlight of my fortnight and this is why I touched on earlier <laughs> is I fulfilled a lifelong dream and that I got to mix a song by Cradle of Filth. That was it. Oh. So, as I mentioned earlier, I love mixing music. Um, obviously, if you can tell by looking at me if you're on YouTube. If you're on just the podcast, you don't know what I look like, but you can tell I'm a heavy metal guy, right? Uh, Cradle of Filth are my all-time favourite band. He's the Tin Man. I've seen them live ten times, and we'll see them every time they're in the UK moving forward. I just have to. I have... Most of my wardrobe is Cradle of Filth shirts. I've you know? seen them three times now. Yeah? 
You're racking them up. And I've, I've... You don't even like them. <laughs> I don't not like them. I just... <laughs> In my personal time, I would not choose to listen mm. to them, but they are very good to see live. They're oh, good. Yes. They're good fun. Put on great show yeah. every time. Um, but as part of the way I learn to mix music, I use a service called Nail the Mix, and each month they give you a professionally recorded session, and they give you all of the raw tracks from a song, and you get about a month to work on it. And at the end of the month, the guy that originally mixed the song does a huge live stream, and they show you how it was made basically uh -huh. and I've been using this for like five years now and I love it it's, the, it's just the best investment I've ever made and obviously over like the last six to twelve months really I've been so focused on learning photography video editing streaming stuff and mm. all this that the music stuff has taken a, a back seat to yeah. be fair um, but when I saw that this month was a Cradle of Filth song, oh my god, I was in <laughs> the there so fast. The excitement, you practically jumped out of your seat and were dancing around. It was like the best news I'd ever had. It really was. Oh, it was so I'm good. I'm so happy for you. Thank I love you, seeing you happy, it's so good. So I spent a lot of my free creative time over the last few weeks working on that. Yeah. And genuinely, I was really happy with the result because I'm a bit rusty out of practice, but I think this might have been the best one I've ever done. Um, so really, really happy with that. I got so close to the original. Like, just a few little changes that I actually preferred. So, what I'll take I really, that as a win. What I really liked of you doing that is that there was a day that you had done it all day, and about an hour before you, two hours before you stopped, you were like, oh, yes, I'm really good. You were saying to me, like, oh, yeah, it's really good. Kind of a little check in with you. And then two hours later, you were like, I think I've done too much of this. <laughs> you were like, my ears are gone like flat. You couldn't. Yeah. You can pick it up and move like it might be fine, but I'm gonna leave it and I'll, I'll come back. And you came back the, the next day or the two days later, and you were like, "Yeah, I was right." And I think that's a very uh, uh, important skill to have mm. in most creative things is when you've done too much of it and oh, you've yeah. got to like just take a little step back and then come back to it and be like, "Actually, yep. yeah." And then got to know when to stop. So, yeah. That's the hard part. Sometimes you just overdo it and makes yeah. things worse. Mm. And I definitely got to that point. I was like, oh, I don't know that it's, I'm making things better anymore. I'm just changing stop. things for the sake of it. You yeah. Know? So. Like with all, I think with pretty much all creative industries, is it's not like maths where set numbers and set equations will always equal the same thing. Or, mm. you know, it's not like uh, you've got to write a, I don't know, a thousand word essay or whatever. It's, there's no stopping point. Like, you pick when you're done. Yeah. You know? And so where that line is, it's not like there's an actual finishing point. You've got to decide where that finishing point is. And that can be hard to draw sometimes. It so, really yeah, it was. was. It was nice to see that you, you like, acknowledged it and then you came <laughs> back and you were like, yeah, I remember this, like, much better. And then you did, and you were really happy yeah, with it. definitely. Yep. Very, very happy. So that was, like, the highlight of my year, probably. It would be hard to top that because that was such a, a benchmark moment. Really, really happy. So, yep, good times, good times. So, if this was the first time you've joined us, thank you very much for spending your time thank with us. You. Um, hopefully you've liked what you've heard so far. We have another 12 episodes that we've done before this. If you want to go back to the start of the journey and, you know, relive our steps and learn the tips and tricks we've made so far along the way, we'll probably be doing, like, some little uh, catch-up sessions from time to time, won't we? So, you know... I think every, like... Group some tips and 10 tricks 10 to 15 is a good time yeah. to just do, like, a little check-in. Exactly. A little howdy-ho. That's it. Little recaps. That's it. So, hopefully, you've had a good time. Uh, we are also on YouTube if you're just listening to this on a podcast, so please feel free to go join us there Come as well. see our wonderful faces. Yeah. yeah. See these lovely Elfias that we talked about. I haven't uh, got my jingly ones on today. So no, you're too quiet today. So the links to our YouTube channel and all of our other channels, such as Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, etc., will all be on our show notes. Mm -hmm. So feel free to dig in there and follow us on whichever platforms you prefer to use. Um, all follows and subscriptions are greatly appreciated, as well as any engagements such as likes and all that stuff. That really helps us to grow and find new new audience members. Yeah. So please do that. and um, Come say hi. Yeah. If you have any questions for us as well, feel free to reach us at creativequestcontact at gmail.com. Um, we will gladly accept any questions for future topics as well as any feedback you might have for us. Mm -hmm. that, uh, give us ways to improve the show. Tell us more about what you want to hear, what you don't want to hear more of, that sort of thing. 
and we'll gladly make use of that to make improvements for future episodes. There's not enough Joey content. <laughs> There's never enough Joey content. <laughs> That's always my suggestion. More Joey, more Joey. <laughs> um, so, yep, yeah, that would be great. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.